Okay. Here with me is Dr. Scott Baker for the Blair Technique podcast here. We're doing, we want to call some bonus content. Uh, Dr. Baker and I were talking recently and he's got some very interesting uh, new marketing strategies that they're employing. They've done a good job adapting to the times uh, as of recording. It's February, 2021. And many folks have been sort of dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic and how that's affected practice and some of the marketing strategies that typically have been viable. So uh, Dr. Baker has been very forthcoming. He's, he volunteered to share what's working in their clinic, highly successful clinic there in South Carolina. So appreciate you, Dr. Baker, for willing to bring that to the table to help our docs uh, reach more sick and suffering people with our message and with our uh, approach. So before we get into some of those specifics, give us an idea of a little bit in your background in chiropractic, how you got introduced to the Blair work and how you got involved. Okay. Well, um, we go back, you know, I got into, uh, had chiropractic care since I've been 12. My uh, uncle Rick uh, graduated back in 81, and he was the first person to give me an, uh, a, a cervical adjustment. And I used to have really bad migraines, and they kind of went away. So I found about the, the magic of chiropractic long before I ever understood the science behind it. Um, and then my brother, uh, later on, he went to school because he thought that was really cool. And then he graduated in 85. And so I got to watch him uh, build many, many practices out in California and learn from him. And, and then uh, I was a late bloomer. I went a different route. I went to learn a bunch of different stuff. And do different activities, sports and things like that and construction and, and production. I just was in a lot of different fields uh, and I, I like to compete in jujitsu and combat arts. And when I got about 31, my body said, okay, that's enough. And so I, I retired from that and uh, got into, uh, you know, being an entrepreneur and I opened up a few businesses and things were really, really good. Uh, about 35 years old, I, uh, I started getting sick. And I was going to my chiropractor three times a week. Um, and I didn't think it had anything to do with chiropractic at this point. I just started getting really sick and I, I got migraine headaches again. I got visual problems. Uh, I got dizzy spells. I had anxiety attacks. I had night sweats, uh, digestive problem. It was just, my whole body just started freaking out. And I, I lost like 70 pounds in like two months. It was just wow. crazy. And, uh, and so at that point, I started getting desperate for answers. So I started going all these medical routes. Um, and of course, you know, I went to the medical doctor and he says, yeah, you probably need to go to the ear, nose, throat guy who wrote me a, he wrote, he actually gave me a bag of samples and said, I'll write you a prescription, whichever one works. And then he says, but you should probably go get your gut checked. So I went to the GI guy who scoped me up and down and he says, you have ulcers. Here's a baking soda medicine. He says, you're really stressed out. You should probably go to the psychologist. Went there and he had like a candy bowl of, of Annex, Xanax on top of the desk. and says, here you go. Uh, you probably should be on Prozac, which I didn't want to do. Uh, but he says, but you, you know, you may want to go get your heart checked. So I went and got my heart checked. Heart doctor says, you got a great heart, super healthy. Everything's great. But he goes, you know, you sound like you may have some sort of uh, cancer. He, and he said, you need to get checked at the oncologist. So I ended up going to the oncologist, the oncologist checked me. And then we had the scariest conversation in our life. And when he, he came back and says, you have some sort of rare metastasizing cancer and uh, you'll probably be dead in 30 days if we don't do an exploratory surgery on you immediately. And you have about a 50% chance of surviving the surgery. Wow. So at that point, uh, I was coming to terms with, okay, shoot, man, you know, I had a pretty wild life up to this point And I've done a lot of cool things and uh, I got to prepare now. I got a wife and four kids. It was really devastating. And so I started going into what I needed to focus on and that was taking care of my family. So I started selling my businesses. I called my uh, uncle up who did the first adjustment and I said, Hey, you know, I told him the whole story and I said, I need you to be power of attorney and help me with some transition because I had some businesses where I had partners and we needed to protect the family. And then he said something to me very strange. He says, well, have you gone to an upper cervical chiropractor? And I, I laughed. I said, what in the world is that? I've never heard of that. You've never mentioned this before. He goes, well, those guys are kind of weird. He goes, but whenever we have patients, we can't get better. We send them there. And I'm like, what? I'm like, well, why don't you just do what they do? He goes, well, it's more work, more schooling. It's just, it's just harder to do. 
And I'm like, okay. And, and, and he goes, you should go see one. And I'm like, ah, I mean, I go to my chiropractor 15 years to carry me all through my sports, like my family. I'm like, ah, I don't think it's going to, this is for me. Of course, my, he, my wife finds out and she's like, oh, she's whatever it's going to take. You know, if you have to, you know, uh, sacrifice a chicken, we're going to do it. <laughs> you know, so, so we find out there's a doctor. Um, you, you may or may not know of him. His name is Vern Hagen. Mm. And uh, he studied directly under BJ Palmer and was at Palmer University as an instructor for many, many, many years. And he did uh, what's called advanced orthogonal. And so um, I go see this guy and he was like, I don't know, his eighties or something. And I was in my thirties. So he looked like super old to me. And uh, we get in there and he, he checks me and he does the, you know, does my x-rays and he, he just points at my, you know, what I know now to be my Atlas. And he says, yeah, that's your, your problem there. It's, it's, you get, you know, it's really, really stuck. It's out of place. That's what's killing you. And I look wow. at him, I say, you know, I get adjusted there, man. And then, you know, he said to me, he goes, not like me, you don't. And I'm like, all right, you cocky old guy, let's see what you got. Right. And so uh, he does his work up and he puts me on my side and puts this weird contraption over my head. And then he goes, Patink. And, you know, at this point, I'm a little frustrated because I got to be honest with you. I've had the poppy cracky chiropractic my whole life and I was dying. So I expected like a femur snapping and then angels singing and I was going to come back to life. Nothing. And I'm like, what in the world, man? I'm like, okay. And then he does another weird thing. He walks me down the hall and puts me in a broom closet on some sort of cot, like an army cot. I swear there's a broom in the corner. It was a broom closet, man. He goes, rest here for 20 minutes. I'm going to come get you back. So I laid there and I'll be honest, y'all, I was fuming. I was irritated. I was mad. I didn't feel any different. Matter of fact, I was irritated now. So I felt worse. So he comes and gets me. He post checks me and he says, that was great. You responded well, go home and rest. I'll see you in a couple days. And I said, no, you won't. And I want my money back because this is ridiculous. And I'm standing over this dude and I'm like twice as big as him, maybe three times as big as him. And he's standing his ground, looking at me in a wrinkled face. Like he's been through this a million times and just like, says you know he's standing his ground we're arguing out there my wife hears us she comes over and grabs her goes we'll be back we'll see you and i'm like ah you know arguing anyways i was too weak to fight with her so she pulls me out of there and we go home and you know and that night man it was it was horrible and i try not to get too emotional here but you know i was dying man and uh, i was breaking into night sweats i had tachycardia events every night i I, i'd wake up two three in the morning like i was dying and it was horrible and i didn't feel any better didn't feel any change Go back on Wednesday. He does his little patink, puts me in the broom closet. And uh, same thing. I just I don't feel any change. Friday is my third visit. I go in there. He checks me again, does his little patink thing, lays me in the broom closet. And while I'm resting in the broom closet, and the first time in like two months, I got hungry. My stomach started growling. And, and I haven't been able to eat anything but boneless, skinless chicken breast with no seasoning and raw spinach, or I will throw up violently, mm. like, like violently. And so I got really, really hungry. And I didn't think, once again, had nothing to do with what was going on with this guy. And so he gets me, checks me, goes, oh, you're holding. Fantastic. You look good. Let's just, you know, we'll see you on Monday. I'm like, whatever. And I, I walk over to my wife. I go, honey, I go, I'm hungry. And she goes, you're hungry? I said, I'm starving. She goes, oh, well there's, you know, uh, some chicken and spinach left over. And I'm like, no, 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 no. I go, I want a sandwich. She goes, you're going to throw up. And I said, it's worth it. I got to have one. I'm starving. <laughs> anyway. So we go to Subway and you know, this is winter time in, in Iowa. We go to Subway and I get the food, but she makes me eat it out in the car with the door open because she knows I'm going to throw up. So I'm sitting here in the winter on the side of the car with the door open, freezing, eating the best sandwich I've ever had in my life. Like the flavors were incredible. Like things were coming back to life and, and I didn't even realize. And then I, you know, I ate it and it was like the best thing ever. And I sat there and we just waited because he's going to throw up. And we waited 10 minutes, 15, 20 minutes. I never threw up. And so like, okay, we'll drive home. And she's like, keep the window down. You feel anything, we're going to pull over. You know, and you got to give her understanding. I've thrown up in her car like, multiple times at this point so she had enough of that so i i go home and that night i slept through the night without any tachycardia event and slowly over time and i that was the last adjustment i had for probably at least a month and a half which is crazy because i got adjusted every single time for 20 years up to that point right and so i held and held and and i just got better and better and like within 30 days i was back to life so then i'm like okay 
that was really, really cool. I'm, you know, I'm back at work doing my thing and I wake up one day and I'm just not excited to go to work and I'm a hundred percent on guy or I'm not on at all. Yeah. And I, I just couldn't understand why I wasn't excited to go to work. This went on for a couple of weeks. Finally, I just, you know, I got on my knees and I prayed about it and said, what's going on here? You know, what, what's happening? And I felt prompted that I need to do what was done for me, for others. Huh. I felt I was called to it. And so I looked at my wife and I said, you ready to be broke again? <laughs> she goes, what do you mean? I go, I go, I'm selling the businesses. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to go to college and I'm going to do what that guy did. I want to make a difference. And so we did, we sold everything, moved out and her being awesome. She totally supported me. And so then I get to Sherman thinking I'm going to learn all this stuff, right? Well, they don't teach AO there. They teach uh, Blair and Dr. Perry Rush uh, was the, uh, the instructor there who I became dear friends with. One of still really good friends to this day. I love that man. Um, and we would have arguments about upper cervical rationale in class and, you know, and he would tr challenge me because I'm like, ah, I'm going to do the machine thing. And he's like, well, you should check this out. And, and I'm like, I'm not going to do it. And he's like, well, why don't you just try it? And I'm like, okay, fine. So I got together with uh, Nick Mullins. He was the president of the uh, Blair Club at the time. And he took care of me. And lo and behold, my first adjustment, I held like 11 weeks. I'm like, wow, look at that. I'm like, okay. So then I st stayed under care, fell in love with it. Uh, then, of course, I started studying. And Dr. Susan Hooper uh, was the lady I did the primary, intermediate, and advanced courses with while I went to school so I could learn it. And by the time I got into clinic, I was ready to go because David Croxford was there. It was myself and a few other people were doing Blair at the time. Uh, and, of course, Perry was there and Dr. Johnson. So we were able to take the x-rays and actually do it in the college. Unlike It's not able to do it right now because they don't have anybody there. But the, then we were able to do it. And so it was great. So I started doing that. And I just totally forgotten about instrumentation because I was focused on this. Mm -hmm. and, uh, got out, got into practice. And uh, I ended up staying in South Carolina, ended up working in Dr. Ky uh, Lyle Sherman's practice. Uh, he passed in Dr. Thomas carried on, who's the guy who opened the school. And so I, I, by default have inherited all of Lyle Sherman's green books and a bunch of other really cool things. And so that's the carry on that tradition. I just, a you know, simple guy like me just ended up in the right place, you know, and I was blessed with that. And so I stayed here and served the people and I'm only a mile away from Sherman. Haven't made it very far. <laughs> <laughs> I would say I'd argue that I think you've made it quite far. And I appreciate you sharing your heart on that backstory, because a lot of what we're going to talk about is focused on how do we get folks into the have the experience that you've had, right? Because there's a lot of folks that are out there sick and suffering and they don't know where to turn. And that inflection point in your life with when your uncle just, you know, made the it would have been very easy for him to not say that. Right. And say, well, he's too far gone. It's, you know, he tried chiropractic. It's, it's failed him. You know, but that little inflection point of have you tried an upper cervical chiropractor that can make all the difference. And you think of the trajectory of your life since then and the, and the impact that you've had in, in your practice and career. It's a tremendously important uh, statement that he made there. And so we want to provide that opportunity for as many people as we can in our clinics, because there's so much untapped potential within these people that are living not clear you know, living subluxated. So uh, all of what we're going to talk about, it's great, you know, to boost your business and your influence, but it's really about helping people. And it's about connecting the dots between, you know, what's actually inhibiting your health and your life potential and the expression of your life. And uh, we have a very, a very precious message to carry. And so our, our goal here is we want to get that out to as many people as we can and, and then deliver the goods because we've got an excellent technique that's going to deliver on that message. So appreciate you taking the background uh, and a little bit of time to explain your story there. I know that's going to resonate with a lot of our docs because many, many of them have a similar story, you know, where they got into this work because it saved their life or, or the life of someone close to them. So I appreciate you using that uh, to set the stage. Um, and, and with that in mind, you, you obviously got out and uh, got into practice. You built, built a successful practice. You've been in practice for a period of time. Uh, you've seen different phases. You know, you've been through different seasons of practice. And, and I think what we're coming out of or, or working through right now with this COVID-19 pandemic, the way that it's affected the way people think and, and interact, um, obviously a lot of what has worked traditionally for you in reaching people has had to be adapted. And so what we're going to talk about today are some of the ways that uh, the roadmap that you shared with me just before we jumped on the call here, 
ask uh, in terms of how you guys reach uh, folks in the community has had to shift and adapt. So uh, if you would, before we get into what you're doing differently, kind of lay the groundwork for uh, the roadmap that you showed me there and what, what you guys would traditionally have set up for sort of your external and internal marketing systems. And then we'll talk about how that's had to be adapted and the things that you're doing now. Absolutely. And thank you for those kind words. I appreciate that. Um, so when uh, a young doctor, well, I guess let's set the stage here because what's well, a really important question that most young chiropractors before they graduate, about a year before they graduate, they need to know what doc kind of doctor they are prior to going out. And I don't mean technique. I mean, are they a business owner? Are they a head doctor, are they an associate doctor, or they, I like to call a worker bee or worker doc, okay? And, and to understand if you're in, what one of these categories you're in is going to save you a ton of heartache and problems. And the time to figure that out is when you're in college. Uh, I put together a cool questionnaire to help people figure that out. I've been out to Life West a couple of times. I teach for free. And if any of those clubs want me to come out, I'd be happy to come do it. I have a roadmap from a year before you graduate to three years into practice on how to make sure you're successful, you stay in, you, and you'll be able to help a lot of people. Um, so understanding that first. And then the second part, when you are in practice, like what you mentioned earlier was so great. It's about them. It's not about us. And so creating in a, a beautiful, clean, safe environment. The number one thing, patients got to feel safe. Mm. All right. As chiropractors, we don't have a good reputation. That's why they come to us last. Mm. Okay. So it's super important. They're scared. They're hurting. They've been let down a million times. Now they're coming. You got to help them feel safe. So everything about your practice needs to be about their safety. Next, they need to know that you care. They don't care what your technique is. They don't care how much it costs. They don't care about anything. So they want to know, do you care? And mm -hmm. once they know you care, then what you said, you got to deliver the goods. You know, what we found in statistically, technique is only 14% of your success. Hmm. For, technique is what will keep the patient there, right? It won't get them in the door. You know what I mean? They don't know what Blair is. They don't know what AO is. They don't know what all Epic. They don't know what any of that stuff is. But once they get in and they get that result, like, oh, look at that. Then you can create lifetime maintenance patients because our goal is our goal to get patients in the door and get them better. Or is our goal to get patients in the door and help them understand what a life of maintenance is like? What it's like to be maintained under chiropractic care. It is so much easier to maintain a healthy body than it is to fix one, right? Mm -hmm. And if that's your always your end goal and you can always help the patient understand that, then we get into some really fun stuff because then your maintenance patient, maintenance collections time, and we'll get into some of those stats in a moment, makes your life a lot easier. So the first year, you're a new doctor, associate doctor, we have it broken down into a couple different categories. And one is, of course, internet. The next one is referrals. The next one's print ads, talks, dinner talks, health talks. The next is location and then professional referrals and then screenings. Okay. Now screenings, I'm sure everybody knows what a screening is. So I don't have to get into too much detail with that. Uh, professional referrals. That's, you know, you creating relationships with other professionals in your community. Okay. That's stuff everybody should know if you, and if you ever have like, if like anything I've mentioned uh, and you need a little more detail, uh, please feel free to reach out to me. I'd be happy to help. Um, the next one is location. And this is something we need to talk about. Yeah. Statistically, it is proven that an office that's located next to a grocery store or a pharmacy or both, which is called storefront property, not strip mall where you're next to a little Caesars and a vape shop. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking a nice quality storefront that's next to those locations will give you the highest quality and the highest amount of walk-in traffic. Mm. If you have a standalone and you got a lot of drive-by traffic, well, that's exactly what's going to happen. They're going to drive by. <laughs> but you get that walk-in there. And of course, your storefront needs to look inviting and also 
uh, and, and also speak in a way that they understand. You're not going to put on their come get your uh, cervical cranial junction examined by our Titron. You know, that the, what people are like, <laughs> what the heck is that, right? So it's got to be something as simple. And I know this may make a butt a bunch of butts cringe right now, but it's got to say, got a pinch nerve. You know, that's their language. They, they get that. Like, they're not going to relate impingement versus, you know, juxtaposition. They're not going to know that level of stuff we get. But if it's simple, oh, you got a pinch there. That makes sense. I get that. I must have a catch in my neck or down here in the South, we call it a kink in the neck, right? So that kind of stuff, you have to be able to meet them where they are before you can bring them where they need to go. Uh, the next part, talks, dinner talks, geez, you know, uh, I had two years where I had a hundred percent starts with dinner talks and we were doing them once a month and they weren't big ones. We had small ones. Some people like to have these big events. Mine were always only 20. I only allowed 20 in and we had four or five a year. And uh, the one last year we did, it had 88 patient starts for care that they needed. And that was awesome. Uh, and, and if you ever want any more uh, information about that, please call. The next one's print ads. Now print ads are interesting. Uh, you're most likely gonna get more of your older Medicare type patients with print ads, but they also need love and care too. So that's something you could look into. And then of course, referrals, referrals, referrals. Referrals is a very powerful thing. And I'm gonna end with the internet stuff because that's the newer stuff, but referrals, um, there, everybody wants the magic bullet. Everybody, oh, what's the referral? What's the referral statement? There's no such thing as a referral statement that works for everybody because everybody's individual and unique, right? And so like, let's say something simple, Sue, 30, middle 30 mom with two kids, she's coming in and getting results and she's letting you know she's getting better. Now it's the time at the end of the visit to go, Sue, that is so awesome. You know, I remember in your case history that you talked about those migraines starting about the same time your daughter Kelly is, the same age your daughter Kelly is right now. How amazing would it be if we could get her checked and make sure that she's got clear in spine and then she'll never have to come in here later. Let's get her an appointment tomorrow, right? That kind of thing. And once again, did you hear that didn't come from, I need more patients. Go get me more patients. Here's a coupon. Get yeah. out there and give it to two people this weekend. That's not what it's about. It's about knowing your patients and being obsessed with making sure that you're taking care of their family. And then you take care of their friends and their neighbors, right? It's, it's all about the connection. In, in our front office, you come in there at any time and Everybody knows each other. We're all about referral, but that's the number one thing to focus on is being able to do that. That's where you want to end up. So when you first start, it'll be 80% external marketing and 20% internal marketing. But within the next year, that first year, you need to transition it to 80% referral and 20% external, right? Internal to external. That's, that's the, the genius or the, the, the beautiful part of having a practice where you're taking care of families, right? That's, you know, taking big, large families and the, uh, the type of, um, uh, uh, like, well, let me see what I, how I want to share. I want to word this properly. So when they, when they, when you have patients that pay and stay, right, then you build up what is called your maintenance practice, Okay. And so therefore, because we all those first couple of years are like more patients, we need more patients, right? Right. We think about that. And, and when you get to a certain spot where your maintenance collection now covers your overhead and everything over that now is profit, life starts to get much better. But I'll tell you what's really exciting is when your maintenance collection doubles or triples your overhead. And now we're helping so many more people. And it's so cool. So when we talk about goals in the office, we don't talk about how much are we going to collect this month? We don't talk about, we talk about how many patients are we going to start? Mm. If I went and statistically met with a lot of you, I bet you, I just bet if we looked at how many new patients you came in and how many converted to care, 
I bet you're getting enough patients to have an unbelievably successful practice, but your conversion rate is low. So is it, do you really need more patients in the door or do you need to get better at communicating bonding so you can get more starts? That's yeah, you, so made, you made a lot of great points there. So I want to kind of let that breathe so folks can think about what you've just said. Um, because if you don't have that present con time consciousness with your folks, you're going to miss that opportunity to make the heartfelt referral statement in the first place, because you're thinking about who's the next new patient, right? When you've got an actual patient on your table right there in front of you. Uh, but all the other steps that we talked about beforehand lead up to that, that last little statement that connects the dots. Because like you said, you've put yourself in a position that's convenient, somewhere they're already going. So you've made yourself accessible. Uh, you've started the conversation with your language and your communication in a way that resonates and connects with them. So you're not creating any barriers as far as communication goes once they see you. So that might motivate them to take the first step to go through the door. You deliver the goods with excellent chiropractic service. So they've felt and they've experienced you know, what it's all about. And then you've helped to connect the dots between someone they know in their circle, someone in their family, having that same experience. So all the things that you're talking about actually lead up to the referral, right? It's not just what you said. It's all those steps preceding. It's creating an exceptional healthcare experience within chiropractic that's going to make it that much easier. Um, and having the intention that I'm going to be these people's chiropractor forever. You know, for all these new patients that come in, we're, we're set for the long haul here. I'm, I'm committed to you. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think people can feel, you know, that sense of grounding when it's not so much about, oh, when are we going to get you feeling better? It's we're here for, for the long haul. We're here together. We're going to work this out. So, um, awesome, awesome Charlie philosophy. Ward, Charlie Ward used to say, we got to make it easy to win and hard to lose. And so we got to stack the deck in our favor because we're already go. inside and so you want to make it easy for your patients to refer, right? And so by doing all those things, that's what makes it easy. Beautiful. Okay. So let's talk digital um, because I know that you guys have sort of shifted that focus. If we're kind of looking at the pie chart of your marketing there, you know, going from something like 10% digital to a greater percentage digital, uh, talk about some of the ways that you guys have implemented different strategies now, because obviously the, the dinners aren't happening. The screenings aren't happening. The talks are probably not right. happening. So you've just got to pivot. You know, we can sit around and complain about what we're not doing, or we can make an adaptation. So talk about what you guys are doing now to shift your focus digitally. Right. So internet is a huge, huge, huge thing we're doing now. And uh, first thing we had to do, uh, and this is something you may want to look into for your websites, is make sure you have a secure website. Mm -hmm. which means it's an HTTPS. If it's not an HTTPS, Google will gig you and throw you under the bus. So that's, that's step one. Number two, make sure that your website designer has created a uh, WordPress or um, algorithm which connects the, uh, what do they call, keywords. And so that you're drawing things into the website. Also, I suggest having a book online feature as well and a little ask, you know, Dr. Steinberg on the side where it says, hey, there you go. You know, you can, you can answer questions. So you want to do all the bells and whistles there. That's like the, the, the kind of the basic run. Then, okay, now we got to go, okay, well, how are we going to market this thing? So we've been doing a lot of different stuff. Uh, the first thing we started was with a company called Atlas Digital. We all like that word, right? Atlas. So we thought that was pretty cool. And so I got with them and of course, trying to figure out what the investment is here and is it gonna be an ROI? Is this real, is it gimmicky? And you gotta understand right off the bat, uh, they, they, and I'll go through some of the stats with you, they will draw patients to you. They like to call it funneling. That doesn't really sound very good, but um, there's that. And then you have to look at it. It's gonna respond a lot like a Groupon if you have done Groupons. It's a bit more uh, specific. And the cool part is, is you can tweak it uh, and work on different demographics in different areas. And we see results every time we make these fine tuning. There's a team that works with you. So this isn't a quick, quick fix, but if we look back, okay, we started, oh, let me talk about the um, the investment. So you're looking at start cost is probably gonna be around, you know, $2,500 to $3,000, you know, and then you're gonna have a, a marketing amount of money, uh, $750 to $1,000, 
a, a month that you need to put in uh, ads. So there, there's a continual there. And then for each patient that makes it to your office, I believe it's $90 uh, if they make their appointment. Here's the cool thing. how The only way they know if they made the appointment is not by us keeping the record. The patient has to text them while they're in the office and patients don't a lot. So probably about 20 to 30% of them that actually come in don't, so you don't even get charged for those, which is kind of interesting the way they do that. And I would, if I owned that company, I'd do it a little different, but anyways, uh, it's, it works out in our, what, what is a bank error in our favor, <laughs> like on Monopoly, right? Uh, right? Okay, so we started in June and you all remember the atmosphere in June uh, of last year, right? Not so great. We had 16 patients scheduled 16 patients had a new patient appointment and what we call an R2 report, which is the report of findings recommendation and the financial for a plan of care. This was your first month working with them. Very first month. There were three started and paid for care. So our first month, we collected around 10,000 and our out was about three grand. Our, our success rate of starting a patient was at 19%. Now that's extremely low compared to what we're normally working with. But the cool part is we found three patients that did want to start care. And in each one of those patients, like I said before, if you do it properly, each patient is worth about 16 referrals over the next year to two. Okay. All right. We go to July. July was really uh, another rough month. 13 patients scheduled. 11 had a new patient visit and an R2 report. One was a no-show for two of the R2. Two of them started care. That's 18%. And once again, we collected right at $10,000. Now this month though, there was no $3,000 cost. It was only $750 for ads and $90 each. So now our ROI is definitely increased even though the people starting decreased. Then we got to August. Now August is my fault because I said, I don't like the ad amount, I think it's not worthy of what we do. And I know more than you guys. So change the number. And we did. And hat in hand at the end of the month, I had to come to them. Okay, I'm sorry. Go back to doing what you guys know. I won't tell you how to do it. Blah, blah, blah. So in August, we had four patients scheduled. Four patients had new point, new patient appointment. And the R2, one started care and paid. So, uh, and then September, we got up to nine patients. Uh, eight of them were reported on and one started. So that's 11%. Okay, October. October, we had 10 patients scheduled. 10 have been reported. Two started around 10,000. Uh, November, six patients scheduled. Six reported. One start. Um, December, five patients scheduled. Two got reported. Three were no-shows and zero starts in December. Okay, January kicked in. We had five patients scheduled, three reported, two no-shows, one started. Now, we tweaked some things and met with them because we were concerned over those last couple of months why we're getting this. We had some patients that were Medicare uh, and things like that that were definitely not going to ever be a good fit for the type of work that we do. Hmm. And so uh, we made some tweaking and gosh, in February, I would love to give you the stats, but February is still in the middle of it. And we've already, we've already started New patients, uh, 12 uh, reports, uh, I think eight of them, and we've already started five, which is, you know, about 20 grand. So we're doing much better already this month since we made some tweaking there. So I highly recommend uh, Atlas Digital. And you got to remember, I am in Sparkle City, South Carolina, y'all. So if you're in a real, an actual city where there's a lot of people, holy cow. I mean, because if I can make uh, this successful in Spartanburg, those of you that are in cities that have more than 60,000 people, you should probably be killing it right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so, absolutely. So let's, let's give folks an idea of sort of that, uh, that breakdown a little bit better. So the 3,000, they built you a new website. Is that correct? Nope, they did okay. not. So they, they set up the infrastructure. Platform. Yes, Got it. So they set up the infrastructure for you to have this machine running passively in the background, which is great about digital. It just works behind the scenes. And there's like a back office and stuff like that involved as well. Too. Okay. Got it. And so then the additional money that you're talking about, that's for folks that aren't familiar ad spend. So that's going to be what you put into the Facebook marketing system so that you're getting those clicks so that you're getting eyeballs in front of that ad that you're running. 
Right. And you Good. can put okay. as much as you want. We pick 750 as our focal point. So Good. the more you put into it, the more you'll get funneled to you. So like awesome. if I was in a city like Charlotte or Dallas or something like that, I'd probably put in like 1500, maybe more. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Okay. And th the cool thing about uh, the digital, like you said, is if you've got the ability to go in there and fine tune your preferences and your, your messaging and your targeting, Absolutely. if you're getting that feedback that, Hey, you know, we're, we're kind of missing the mark on our demographic here. We can just make a few tweaks and you're already seeing a good return on that uh, for making that adjustment. So cool. Good stuff. Um, you, we talked earlier, uh, you mentioned getting connected with and working with ZocDoc. So explain to folks what that is and uh, what you guys are doing with that particular approach. Okay, great. So uh, ZocDoc is a, uh, a website that helps patients find doctors. So it's kind of like health grade or, or like Google for looking for professionals. So we're one of the professionals. There's lots of others, dentists, Hygiene, I mean, uh, you know, foot doctor, whatever. There's all kinds of doctors in there, but we, for chiropractic, uh, they do that. Now they're the ones that actually it was kind of cool is they set up the book online on my uh, website as part of their deal with no extra charge. Uh, they're pretty cool because it doesn't really cost you anything to get started with them. And uh, they just charge you for patients that show up. So I think it's, it's not very much either. It's like, $60 or something like that. And here's the cool part. They're not coupon patients. These mm -hmm. are full paid patients. Like I, I apologize. I didn't go back. So the Atlas digital is a $21 coupon, right? And the initial cost of care at our practice is 514. That's for your consult exam and, and x-rays. Okay. Mm -hmm. so you get that for $21. So there's a, there's a really a big gap between $21 and $5,000 in care. So you got to really work that out. Now, sure. the cool of Zoc Doc is they come in and they don't have any of that. They're just coming to make an appointment to find a doctor. Yeah. So uh, that's how that works, and they do that. Like I can tell you the tenth of August, and this goes to February tenth today. So four, uh, six months. Money to them was minimal. It was nothing. Uh, eight patients scheduled, six patients reported, two had consult only. Out of the eight, four started care. You know, so now we're at 15, 16 grand here of care without giving it away and a higher percentage of start rates. Not a lot, not a ton, but you get a couple different ways of this happening. Now you're building something that's helping out and it's starting to pick up more now too, because now we're getting reviews on ZocDoc. And that's another big deal. Just like anything, you got to get reviews, come back to Google, got to have reviews. I mean, and don't be afraid to ask. And once again, make it easy to win, hard to lose. We made business cards with how to do it, the step-by-step -step how to do a review. And we give it to patients all the time. About 10% of them will follow through. So you got to keep giving them out. <laughs> but those yeah, are and very it's, it's, You can easily on online make a QR code that you put on the back of that card. They pull out their cell phone, point the camera at it. It takes them right there. So there's a lot of ways to make that as easy as possible, like you said. So yeah. awesome. And, and just for the folks listening, you know, Dr. Baker sharing some tactical, practical things that they're that they're doing right now. These aren't necessarily companies affiliated with the Blair Society or anything like that, but it is appreciate. We do appreciate that you're just sharing exactly what you're doing, because a lot of times folks will kind of keep a lot of this stuff close to the chest and won't say exactly what they're doing and what the returns are. So I appreciate that your transparency, because it does give folks sort of a frame of reference for understanding what should we expect if you do something like this, right? Because it's a it's a new thing for a lot of folks. A lot of practices have never really had a strong digital outreach. And so you don't know what to expect, especially if what you're what you're good at, maybe an orientation class, a dinner with the doc, a screening, that's your sweet spot. Uh, this is going to be a little bit different in what to expect. So appreciate you sharing uh, the details because that's, you know, for us analytical upper cervical people, it's we want to see that that data. Right. And, and my pleasure. And I'll tell you, once again, keep in mind that I am in Spartanburg, South Carolina, y'all. If you would just if, if I was in a city, this would be a no brainer for me. Okay. Uh, okay. So the next thing we did, which was very, uh, once again, outside of the box, you've never done this before is we put a sign, a three by five foot metal sign on the, on the ground at a very busy intersection 
in Boiling Springs, which is right next to, close to our office, uh, in a car wash, a very popular car wash called Shine On 9. It's on Highway 9. That's what they call it, Shine On 9. Okay, since we started with there, we have had three patients scheduled, one consult, one was a no-show, and one was reported, and they started care. It cost me $150 to make the sign, and I think it was uh, 100 bucks a month to have it there. But here's the fun part. We're getting recognition for that sign all the time. Now, I got to tell you what I did, which is really important too. I didn't put this big face on there. Uh, Dr. Shreve, who is my associate doc, uh, is younger female doctor, right? If you have an associate female, or even if you're a guy, I'd highly recommend get out of your ego and put just a model up there, doctor model female, because people, uh, they know statistically signs if there's a female on there versus a male, there's a 71% chance affinity that they'll look at the female over the male. Hmm. Statistical data that's important to have as well too. So that's something we did. And now because of that, we just did, and I don't have data, but I'd be happy to come back later and share with you. We just decided, well, that little sign, this is a small sign, what if we did billboards? So now I contracted a company called Lamar. They're all over the country yep. and we're doing a big billboard. So we're taking that small sign. And I'm, I'm going to, once again, I, I hate to pucker some butts in here, but the sign is, is, it's got Dr. Shreve and it has her title underneath it. It says, got a pinch nerve in red call now and the phone number. That's it. Simple. That's all it has. Very professional looking, very nice looking, but that's all it says. That we're going to put on the billboards. Now, here's a, something I found out as I did research about billboards. When you do a billboard and you put your stuff up there, they do not replace that billboard until somebody else pays for it. So if you do, when, so if you do like a six month contract, I highly recommend pick five locations have them put up. It costs you a few extra dollars for the signs because you got to have them made, but they're not very much. They're like a hundred bucks. They're real cheap. Put them up there. And I promise you, there's a good chance it'll stay up for three or four or five more months before they sell that sign again. And then you'll saturate the market. So we're doing five signs in the Boiling Springs area around our practice. And that's why we picked that strategy. So yeah, all fascinating. the cost is for six months, five signs, it was right at $3,100. Okay. So one patient start will pay for all of it. Yeah. And it's, it's, I, I like that you said thinking outside the box because these are things that you wouldn't necessarily think about uh, as, you know, the most up and coming types of approaches, but those, those options are still out there. There's still folks that are getting eyeballs on these billboards. So why not see a message that's going to relate to something, you know, that, that really hits home, which is their physical health, their ability to live their life and to, and to you know, do the things that they want to do and need to do without limitations. And uh, you, you get a few of these things going out there in the community, all of a sudden, Someone saw your sign at the car wash. They drove past three billboards. They saw an ad on their Facebook feed. They know somebody that's been there. They drove past your office on the way to the grocery store. They can't get you out of their head. As far as, uh, as, far as the choice, when the time comes to make that step, you're going to be top of mind because you're in so many places uh, with a consistent message. So uh, well done, I think, in terms of thinking about how to proliferate within the marketplace and uh, you know, give folks multiple opportunities to engage with your brand and your message. Thank you. Um, awesome. You know, we'll see how well it works. <laughs> I'm still, I'm still an infant to this. I'm, I'm learning as we go. Uh, now, I, the next thing I have statistically for you, I was going to share is the walk-in traffic. Yeah. Uh, so I have walk-in traffic for the. Now this is this is probably the worst year we ever had was in 2020 for walk-in traffic. Uh, but I can tell you, let's see, we had uh, three, five, six, twelve, thirteen, fifteen walk-ins uh in the year 2020 so that's at least one a month walk-in right that came in uh and then this month so far we had one in january and we've had one in february so consistently that's one and once again it's it, it, if i was in like a probably a bigger city it would be even more walking travel like the year before i gotta get those stats for you there was quite a bit more i remember the day we moved in we had like five people show up that day coming what's going on in here you know um and the cool part is is once again that one patient 
will get the care that they need. Right. And then you can help them invite their family and their friends and their community to get the care that they need. So every one patient is worth 16 more patients in each one of those and each one of those in each one of those. Yeah. And beyond that, you know, we like to say that, you know, chiropractic adds years to life and life to years. So there's almost no way to measure that impact, but you know, it, it, it is far reaching, you know, as BJ said, so appreciate you finishing, uh, all of that information with sort of where we started off, which is why it's important, why it all matters. Uh, that ties closely to your particular situation. Who knows if you'd have had these messages and these uh, different ways of connecting, you know, with that message when you were going through your health challenge, you know, God forbid you didn't have your uncle in your corner to make that connection. Um, who knows where you'd be? So these are all just different ways to help, to help make that connection. So Appreciate you making the time, Dr. Baker, for sharing some very real, some very practical uh, steps and some action plans that folks can put together and start to think about as uh, as they navigate through the changing times. Um, I'm going to make sure that we have links for all the stuff that you're talking about here. We'll put your contact information there. Folks do want to follow up on maybe that four-year sort of timeline for student to DC um, specifically. Uh, if they have any questions about you know some of the tactical, practical aspects of how you've implemented these strategies beyond what we talked about, please feel free to reach out to Dr. Baker. Um, and we'll also put all the links to the Blair Society. We've got more uh, educational resources and, and doctor development resources. We're really doubling down on making Blair Chiropractic a place to, like you said, with your patients, feel safe, feel supported, have a lot of resources at your disposal to be successful in life and practice because we've got a powerful message. We've got a powerful technique that can transform the lives of, of folks. So we want to do everything we can to build you guys up as doctors and doctors to be in the chiropractic schools uh, so that we can continue to share this message, spread the good news of what Upper Cervical is doing in the lives of real people, uh, and at the end of the day, increase our impact. We have this mission that's called Blair to the world. And so uh, we're doing that one step at a time. And we have a wealth of resources and knowledge, even within our ranks here. Dr. Baker is a perfect example of that. So we're going to make sure that you have all the links and all the information to get in touch with Dr. Baker uh, and myself so that we can follow up. And we may, uh, Dr. Baker, in the future, follow up on some of the uh, some of the things that we talked about this uh, this evening so we can get sort of the the before and after views to how things worked out and if, if there's any additional feedback that you have for folks. But in the meantime, I just want to say thank you for being grateful with your time. And if there's anything else that you'd like to leave with our audience, you can take it away. Well, first, I'd like to say thank you for what you're doing. This is awesome. I'm super happy that I was able to to be a part of this. Um, I'd also like to thank Laura, my office manager, for providing all these stats. I, I read these stats off like I kept them. They weren't me, it was my office manager. So I'm gonna give her the props for having uh, the tenacity to keep track of every little thing we do there, which is awesome. Um, yeah, I wanted to share one last thing, which we didn't even touch. Uh, if you haven't heard of Right Eye, Right Eye is an objective analysis for vision and eye tracking. So like circades and things like that, a concussive injury type stuff. It's really, really cool. I just got it, just installed it. And I can't wait to tell you the stats in a few months, how it's working and how we were able to go uh, connect with uh, professional referrals now to all these optical docs around here, let them know what we provide so they can send patients in. So patients will come in to get a right eye exam and be like, wow, what is all of this? Oh, well, if you do have an injury that's affecting your eyes, here's a possible way to handle it. So I'm excited to share that with you soon. Uh, but once again, thanks everybody. And any of you students out there or doctors, if you ever want to talk with me, reach out to me, email me. I'm happy to help out. Awesome. Thanks so much, Dr. Baker. Thank you.